sign-ups during the break. So we've got 16. I don't know how many will speak, but you know, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half is my guess um, in terms of the remaining duration. Uh, but we'll stay so up until 4 o'clock uh, if there are more people that want to sign up. Uh, the uh, next speaker that I do have signed up is, uh, is Victoria Johnson. Okay, we'll come back. Uh, after that, um, Harvey Pullen. No comment. Okay, thank you. I'm going to take less than an hour and a half. Um, David Cabral. Definitely. We can have a chair if you want. Um, he's, he said he's going to stay. That's okay. Um, uh, David is deaf. I'm going to just read what he's reading. Great. Good afternoon. Good morning, uh, Cannabis Control Commission. My name is David Cabral. I'm an advocate for the cannabis community for the deaf community. I've been struggling with service accessibility for American Sign Language interpreters um, to provide in cannabis industries and education programs. I want to share about the deaf community, uh, which has struggled to have access to the Department of Public of Health, DPH, um, for them to get medical licenses. Even in Boston alone, there are about 350,000 people in the community. And uh, out of those are about 150,000 who smoke or consume cannabis products. So many of them in the community ask me for help. Some of the deaf community want to take order classes, but there are not enough, in, or there are no interpreter services, so they cannot get their grower licenses because there's no communication accessible for them. 70% of the deaf community do not have jobs, so they are depending on state welfare. I want to change that uh, because their income is really low. They can't even buy products from dispensaries. Currently, they depend on the black market because it's cheaper and easier for them to have communication. Um, <coughs> they're dependable on the black market because it's cheaper and more and easily, or excuse me, easier for them to have communication accessible by other deaf marketing from it. I have better methods for the cannabis industries if they provide the communication um, accessible for dispensaries for deaf employees to communicate with deaf clients uh, or deaf patients to buy products from dispensaries. That will help to wipe out the black market and the deaf, communi the deaf communities will be able to afford the cannabis products from dispensaries because of the jobs that they would have. That's why I want to help the cannabis community and the deaf communi community at the same time. Uh, there will be good benefits for the cannabis industries to have deaf community because uh, in includes included because they will have ASL courses for hearing people to learn sign language and the culture of it. That would be the good benefits for people to be able to communicate with the deaf community inside of the cannabis industry and outside of the cannabis industry. Um, those 150,000 who enjoy cannabis, they would also be able to participate in terms of jobs as well as the growing the industry and the economy at the same time. March 22nd to the 24th, they have a, pardon me, but NECCAN uh, event happening in Boston. Uh, they will not have any ASL interpreters yet. So they wanted the Cannabis Control Commission to work with the Massachusetts Department, uh, with the Massachusetts Commission for the Deaf and the Hard of Hearing in Boston to have the interpreter service and the ASL or American Sign Language Education programs for cannabis, cannabis industries. Thank you for your time. Thank you, David. And he will email. And if you have thank, any questions, thank, thank you very much. Uh, next speaker is uh, James Gibson. Uh, that's me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, James. Uh, next speaker is Will Donald. I am curious. Okay, thank you, Will. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to consult with one of my colleagues.
um, I think the last name is Weston, and it first looks like ITP or maybe Lee. Just ring the bell for anybody, even close. It's the last name looks like W. Right, Westead, doesn't yeah, W E S T E D. Oh gosh, what? I'm sorry. It's just difficult to read the handwriting. Okay, we'll come back. Thanks. Uh, next speaker is Chad Furman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I, uh, so my name is Chad Furman. Uh, I'm from Polio. I'm a self-employed web application developer. And uh, I just, I, I met Steve Hoffman in the hallway and said thank you, but I want to take a moment.